Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Martin and in today's video we'll be covering how to do the Zettelkasten method in Notion. So before we get started, I just want to say that this video is proudly sponsored by Shortform and we'll be covering more about them later. So what is the Zettelkasten method? I'm going to assume that you roughly know what Notion is. Um, if you don't know, it is sort of a a uh, freeform collaboration tool for notes and documents and uh, productivity as well um, uh, and you can create almost anything you want in it. So Zettelkasten, so the word uh, is an unusual word, it's German for slip box and came from the German sociologist Nicholas Luhmann. It's a note-taking method that helps you really um, distill your understanding of the books you read and the articles you'll read and um, help you create essentially cards of atomic ideas and then you link those together. And where it's really powerful is that once you have these cards, once you have these notes, you can start seeing the insights between different things. So uh, I put this graphic together. So you start with, say, fleeting notes. Um, these are just like your ideas, maybe you've seen a quote. I use fleeting notes if I'm... Um, watching a YouTube video or reading a book, I will just scribble down the bits that I find relevant out of there. Then you've got literature notes, and that's where you take those bits and you start forming your understanding and you're, you're really drafting where this is going for you in, from that original piece of work. And then you move that into your permanent notes where you're starting to take those and you're placing it like a piece in a bigger jigsaw puzzle. You're making sure it fits with your existing understanding and your existing notes, and you're bringing that all together. So fleeting notes are just literally the temporary kind of raw catcher. The literature notes is where you take that and sort of formalize that understanding. And the permanent notes is where you place it in the bigger jigsaw puzzle of your overall understanding. So that's from all the books that you've read and all the videos you've watched, those kind of things. Now where the Zettelkasten is really amazing is that when you have an atomic note, you can then link it to something else. So you don't have to repeat things. You don't have to go too deep. And the idea here is that one note, you should be able to pull that out of your Zettelkasten. You should be able to read it and it still makes sense to you. And if it doesn't make sense, then maybe either you're not clear in your note or you've just got more questions of which then you have the links to start answering those questions. So that's really, really, really powerful and it helps you essentially organically grow your notes without having to do big documents and complete things from top to bottom to end, you know, in one big chunk. And when you have all your notes in a Zettelkasten, you can then start asking questions against that. And that helps you form your understanding and test your knowledge. And you'll either find that you can join things together, answer a new question and gain an insight, or it means that you've got gaps in your understanding. So you can go and then find the right books and articles and things like that to feed back into the process to help answer that. So uh, if you're curious about more of this, um, if you really want to go deep on this, uh, the book How to Take Smart Notes by Sonke Ahrens, I highly recommend that. That is what really distilled my understanding of the subject. And uh, I've got more videos on how to use it in different techniques uh, on this channel. So do consider subscribing. So moving on, Notion. What we're going to do, I'm just going to rattle through Notion and show you a workflow for the Zettelkast and that may work for you. And if you're new to sort of some of the in-depth parts of Notion, setting up tables and bi-directional links and things like that, then hopefully you'll gain something there. Um, but we'll basically just go through it. And uh, the, the goal here is to give you a framework of which to create your own Zettelkast and workflow in Notion. So um, this is a brand new Notion. Uh, it's completely free to use for personal use, so that's really cool. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a Notion table, which will be the container for all the notes that we have. So I'm gonna do that very quickly, and uh, this should make sense. So I'm gonna call this Zettelkast, and I'm gonna go and create a table, and I'm gonna call this my uh, what should I call it? I could call it my second brain. Strictly speaking, second brain is a variation of note taking. It's not really originally from the Zettelkasten. I could call it the slip box, um, but I'll, call, I'll for me, I'll call it my um, my slip box. Okay, so my notes. I like to give my notes titles. I don't give them names. Um, uh, so let's call that title. 
and we can keep the tags so you can just freeform just kind of tag things if it's a particular subject like psychology or um, health or diet those kind of things you can just tag things up there and it's a nice way to just recall things back out and see where you're at um, I then like to have a note type and this would be a select type and here I would say whether it's a fleeting note a literature note or a permanent note so I'll put these types in and there's two more types that I like to put in one is a map of content and a map of content allows you to um, organize sort of a table of contents into a subject because when you've got lots of individual notes it's really hard to know where to start so you use different maps of content and bring that in like a um, yeah just a high level overview like an index to it and the other one I like to put in is questions Well, it's a question so I could ask a question and here I would start linking in the notes that are relevant to that try and answer that question and then maybe that becomes a uh, new piece of insight where questions are really good is you may be thinking of creating a blog post and you want to start with a question like you know the, the example I like to do is how does um, how does imposter syndrome and uh, what if I got my, my example here? yeah so your brain stress triggers and imposter syndrome how do they come together there might be an insight in there and that's how you can look at things in a, in a slightly different way and the other thing that I like to create here is a status so I know what part of the workflow my notes are in and we can then build workflow views off of this so let's create a status and here I would say to do in progress I like to create ready to process so I might have um, a backlog of things I want to study I want to create fleeting notes from them I might be doing that so I put it in a to do so like going through a lecture or, or a book or something like that and then once I've done that I'll put it in ready to process which means I'm ready to start taking it through to literature notes and the permanent notes uh, so I've, uh, I'm sort of capturing this workflow to go from here to here, here to here, and then finally done. Okay, so here I have a table where I can now place things in, and as we go, we may want to create more columns for this just to get a feel for things that are useful to capture. Um, an example might be if I'm reading an article, I might want to just put the link to the original article in. That would be pretty cool. So next thing is to create some kind of template that we want to use when we create a new note. And I keep mine quite light, um, but I do prompt for a couple of things. So in here, we can go and manage our templates and we can create a new, and we could separate a fleeting note template, a literature note template, but I'm just going to call it a uh, Zettelkasten template. So in my template, I just want to capture a couple of things. Um, for example, the main thing I like to capture is a references or see also section. So I'll just place that in here and uh, put something very light in to signal that I want to link things together. And I'm going to create a numbered list and just leave that there and I'm going to turn this into a heading too. Okay, there's not much more to it than this, but the idea here is that you can create templates and you can, if you have a style that you, you want to capture, properties you want to capture, um, maybe even default some of these, uh, then you can absolutely do that. So I'm going to just leave that now. And now I've got a Zettelkasten template. So let's run an example of this. So one of my favorite books that I read many, many years ago is called Grit by Angela Duckworth. So this here is a book about why people are successful and what are the traits that make people successful. And um, I originally listened to the audio book and uh, absolutely loved it. So I have some notes on that at the moment. So essentially I would call this a fleeting note. So let's create this here.
So I'm going to say Grit by Angela Duckworth. Again, I'm just going to create a Zettelkasten template here, and that will now populate uh, this. I could be more um, verbose at how I do this. I could have like a link to the book and then put the type, you know, put the graphic of the book in. I could certainly do all of that. Um, and Notion's really great at that. And you can create a gallery of just your books, which is amazing. Um, but I want to go um, quite lightweight just to really get through the workflow here. Um, so let's take my fleeting notes. I'm just going to paste these in so you get an idea of what they would look like for me. So um, as you can tell, there's probably some spelling mistakes in it, and that's all fine, it's a fleeting note. So let's call it a fleeting note. And uh, let's say this is in progress because I've already got the notes already, but I could create that backlog. And um, in this case, the tag would be grit, for example. Oh. And maybe I want to tag it as a uh, as a book reference as well and things like that. Again, this is your note-taking system. You can customize that. Um, just a word of warning, if you go really rigid in terms of your structure, then you might find that it doesn't quite fit. I personally like to just be quite freeform. I feel that the tools should uh, allow me to go at maximum kind of, you know, speed of thought and then figure out what my intention was I don't want to have to stop and organize things up front so you'll see my approach is generally quite lightweight but that's you know personal preference so here are my notes now what I would do here is now use this to start creating some literature notes from this I won't go in too much depth over this um, uh, because we're really talking about the workflow rather than the book in particular but some of the some of the ways I would approach this. So we have some higher level concepts. So perseverance, passion, grit versus con versus consciousness. For me, those are sort of the keys that I would use to create an individual note from. So let's do this. So what I want to do is um, create. I'm quite. Uh, quite lazy and I like to let's bring this out as a separate window so I can work side by side uh, so, da, da, da. so I want to create a reference and then kind of the work that I'm doing so on the right hand side we'll have my my book let's open that as a full page so what we have here is something to work from so I can create notes about say uh, Angela Duckworth in in particular and I would probably do this directly as a permanent note because I'm just merely sort of stating a reference a fact um, uh, so I would do that so in this case so I'd create an Angela Duckworth this is a person um, so I can look and you know filter all the people I've referenced and uh, without really spending too much time, I'm just going to paste in these bits of information. So what's really good about this, oh, I didn't copy properly, is let's say now I'm, I'm writing a blog post where I'm talking about Angela's work and I want to introduce her. I can just link in this note. I've got an overview. She did a BA in Neurobiology, an MSc in Neuroscience, and a PhD in Psychology, and she runs uh, the Character Lab um, project. And again, I could go and dive into that in more depth if I really wanted to. I won't at this stage. So that's a person, and uh, we'll call this a, I'll call it a permanent note because it's sort of my final thinking, and I'm just going to say that one's done. Okay, so let's now look. So talent and in and intelligence. Um, so there's some thoughts around this. So let's create a literature note on here. Oh, so talent and intelligence. And this is a literature note. So I'm gonna just now think about this. Let's create a Zettelkasten template. First of all, I just wanna reference back my fleeting notes and this is where you get the bi-directional linking so if I do a double square bracket I can then 
search for the original page, which is called Grip by Angela Duckworth. Grip by Angela Duckworth. And now I've got that reference. And you can see over here, we've got this backlink. So now I can see where I've referenced this. I could have done the same for uh, the Angela Duckworth entry there. So talent and intelligence. What does this mean to me? I've read this in the book. Um, so I'm just going to just freeform my own thinking about what I've learned from the books. So then I can start just cataloging that high level thinking. So I'm going to do that right now. There's really not much more to put on this at this stage. I might find other things um, further down that I want to populate in here. But I'm just ca capturing that Angela Duckworth concludes that talent and intelligence is not as critical to success than grit is. Right. OK, well, now we start needing to talk about, well, what is grit? So let's go and I can tag these later. I wouldn't worry too much about I want to I want to keep the flow of my of my thinking and catalog later and all of that. So um, so let's say uh, let's create grit. So this will be a literature note and um, and again now if I've if I've accidentally lost the ability to create a template, I just press backspace to clear the contents. Create this and I'm going to reference the book again. So here, what is grit? I'm just going to write this down. Well, actually, I'm just going to copy these. Um, again, because I've got the reference, that's where it's come from. And I can add my own thoughts here if I, were, if I wanted to um, sort of conclude what that really meant. So that if I'm reading this back in, say, six weeks' time, I can look at that and it still makes sense. OK. So let's assume that you go through and you keep creating your literature notes and uh, you can mark uh, these as ready to process, ready to process. What we want to do is we want to create a bit of workflow now around this. So here we have our slip box. Now we can create some linked databases to the slip box, which is really fun. So let's go and create a linked, uh, create a database link to the slip box. You might have to search if you've got a, quite a big. OK, now. This for me will be I'm just going to expand this out. This for me now is my workflow view. I'm going to add a view called workflow. Let's create a board. Um, so and we can create galleries boards. So if you just want to have like an overview, like a, you create a gallery of just books, that'd be cool. And you can filter by tag if it's a book, for example. OK. So here's my workflow and I can change the uh, the grouping. I have to remember how to do this. By not note type. Uh, by status. OK, so now I can see all the things that I have to, I've got in my backlog, all the things I'm doing, all the things I'm ready to process, and I could just hide the done ones. So yeah, I can basically create uh, this workflow here. Um, I could rename this if I wanted to say, actually call that um, uh, to do or mm, yeah. So these are the things that I want to work on. These are my, this is my to-do list of things to, to do. And I can drag these around to prioritize which ones I want to do. And the idea is that you keep sort of do your studying, do your processing, keep that workflow going, feed stuff in and move it through the workflow. And eventually you start building up your slip box. And then I might want to create a new one called questions. So let's create another link back to the table and say, well, what are my questions? Oh, I uh, did that wrong. And then I could call create a view and call this questions. And now what's really interesting here is I can filter 
this by the note type where it is a question. Okay, so now I could say, uh, what if what if my studies wanted to say, can you gain, can you practice grit, for example? Okay, I might have that question. You see how it comes up now in all the views. This is a note type of question because we're filtered by that. And I could put that as a to-do. And so I can start formulating ideas of this. And then I can go in here, I can create the template, and I can say, well, what's going to be my source of reference here? And I can double double link and say, bring in things like uh, talent and intelligence and uh, and reference things that would be in my, my permanent notes, for example. So this is really just showing how you can create different views, different parts of the workflow. You can filter, you can sort, you can group. Um, and another one that's really kind of cool is, say, the the gallery view. So let's create um, a map of content and we'll we'll just call this one grit. And the type of this will be a map of content. Uh, let's just say this one's actually uh, in progress. Okay. And um, here we could say uh, like a table of contents where we would say, you know, one, and then you can start linking. So we got, I could link to this, two, talent and interest. Now I don't have many per permanent, no, I haven't got any permanent notes in here at the moment. Normally I would link to those, um, but I'm just showing you how you can create a map of content. Um, and then you could add a cover to it, for example. Let's change that cover and do an unsplash, and we'll call this, so grit, uh, I don't know, something hard work. Um, there you go, grit, uh, a, a random random picture that shows someone being gritty, very literal in, in that. But the cool thing here is now I could create a page which has, again, a link back to the database, back to the slip box, but this time, I'm going to add a view of gallery. Call it maps of content. And I'm going to filter this where the note type is a map of content. So now we have this, but the cool thing with Notion is that you can change the properties and you can say, I don't want the page content, I want the page cover. And you can build up a really rich view of the content you have in here. And it's almost like your own kind of visual library of your understanding. And as you build up things on grit, on health, on psychology, whatever, whatever you're interested in, you can build that up and you can organize these into different, uh, different pages. And, um, and essentially, basically, what we're doing is we create one master database that stores everything. And you create the workflows around there, and then you create the views based on that to move it around the workflow. And uh, yeah, you, you work, work on it. Um, I won't go into too much detail about how to create the notes specifically. Um, I will cover that in another video, uh, especially around this book in particular. So it'll be a study session. Um, so if you're interested in how um, how I would take knowledge from a book and actually create those notes. Um, I'll cover that in another video. Uh, this video is really about how to utilize Notion as a way to create multiple views, multiple ways of storing and thinking, slicing and dicing and all of that, your, your Zettelkast and slip box. So don't worry too much about the specifics of like why I've created this note here and not there and, um, it's only because I'm going through it in a, in a tutorial of Notion rather than a tutorial of the Zettelkasten. But hopefully this will give you a good good overview. What I would do is I'd probably reorganize this page, move this maybe out of view and sort of work more in these. So if I wanted to create something on the backlog um, on my to-do, so like uh, a good example is I've, I read an article, I just quickly throw it in there, give it a, a fleeting note, put it in to-do, and now I can go and read that. Notion has a web clipper, so you can actually 
if you're reading something on the web, you can just push it straight into Notion, which is which is really cool. So yeah, that is a sort of the overview of how I would use Notion to create a Zettelkasten uh, note-taking method. So this leads us to our sponsor of the day, which is Shortform. Shortform is an online book summary tool that basically takes the most popular books and distills that down into not just the summary, but the insights as well. And that's something I found very useful in my research when using this service. Um, when you read a book, you normally just get the narrative from the author's perspective. What short form are able to add is to counteract that with what others are saying around there. And I think that's a really unique, unique position for them to be in. So what does it look like? Um, so here's short form. And basically you have a growing number of uh, books completely relevant to the things that I love. Um, for example, the book Grit, which we covered in this video, um, was summarized from short form to help the creation of this video. And that saved me a lot of time. It has been a number of years since I actually read the book. And I have to confess, I did not remember everything about it. And short form have saved me quite a bit here. So there are several categories that you can choose from. My Personal favourites, which ones I think you'll love, will be things like the productivity, because um, we're all about you know being produ productive with our note taking. Um, I particularly like the motivation side because I think there's an autodidactic journey in being a a knowledge kind of someone who loves knowledge and wants to do something, and that comes from within. That intrinsic motivation is really there, and I'm I'm a big proponent of that, and uh, self improvement as well. I mean, we want to get better at doing things, and we want to optimize things and we want to learn more about ourselves and I think the self-improvement sections are really great there but of course there are many other genres that you can cover as well. So um, in my case the book I read was Grit for this video and um, the true lifesaver of this was the one page summary. Because I had read the book before, I didn't have time to really go in deep. I knew the concepts and I sort of remember it, but I couldn't get the specifics. The one page summary is fantastic where you can go in, you can highlight. What I did is I created my fleeting notes from this. And uh, if, if I found that actually it was a little too light in kind of my understanding and I didn't really get what the book was on about, don't worry, they got you covered. Uh, the full summary goes in in depth uh, throughout all of those. So short form, thank you very much for your service here. Uh, I really appreciate it. As a content creator, I certainly appreciate it. And as a autodidact as well, who loves note taking and learning and self improvement and sharing that, this is a valuable tool that will be um, hugely, hugely valuable. So if that's of interest to you, then you can go and get a five day free trial by going to shortform.com forward slash Martin. And they've kindly told me that the next 100 people who sign up to the yearly subscription will get a 20% discount on that price. And I did the maths and that works out roughly two months and 12 days of short form for free if you go for the 12 month subscription. So go check them out and thank you short form for sponsoring this video. So there you have it. This is a conclusion of using Notion and the Zettelkasten method together. It's a bit of an overview. It's really just showing how to use the workflow and how to look at the Zettelkasten in that lens. If you want to see more content around the Zettelkasten method and Notion and maybe some uh, study sessions so you can really see how it works, then give this video a like. Do consider subscribing. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below because I do listen to those questions and it does make me think of what content I need to cover to help you with your Zettelkasten note-taking journey. So thank you very much and catch you in the next video.